welcome to the Dr. Geo podcast. I am your host, Dr. Geo, where it is my goal to share with you some of my research insights and lifestyle tools on how you can improve your urological function and live better with age. Today, we're going to take a deep dive and talk about Gleason 6 prostate cancer and why I'm a huge fan and I simply love that diagnosis. The Gleason score is a total of two numbers. The numbers that are given is typically Gleason 6, Gleason 7, Gleason 8, Gleason 9. Those are the typical numbers. And what they do is once the biopsy tissue is taken from the prostate, is sent to the pathology lab and under a microscope, they take a look at this tissue and they give it a Gleason score. And how they do that is they add up two numbers. They add up the first number. Typically a Gleason six is for example, a three plus three, or it could be a Gleason seven, a three plus four or a four plus three. Gleason eight, that's just a four plus four. And then Gleason nine, four plus five or five plus four. Where do these numbers come from? What a pathologist would do under a microscope is compare the different architecture, the different patterns of that biopsy tissue in comparison to normal tissue. But what you need to know is that normal prostate tissue looks a certain way. And the more the tissue looks different from normal prostate tissue, then that gets a score. So if it's moderately different or mildly different than normal tissue, then it's given a score of one. If it's more than that, it's given a score of two. And the more different it looks, the numbers go from one to five. Then they look at these patterns and they say, okay, which pattern is more frequent in this biopsy tissue from the prostate? The pattern that's more different is the number three, is a stage three. And then which is the second number that's most common in this prostate tissue. Okay. The second number is a four. Okay. So it's a three plus four, the most common pattern, which is a three. And this is just an example, plus the second most common pattern, which is a four, and that's a Gleason seven. So when it's a Gleason six, which is what we're going to talk about most is really the most common pattern is not that different from the second most common pattern, which is a three plus three equals six. So then what's the treatment options for men with Gleason six? The most common treatment option for men with Gleason 6 is no medical treatment. It's called active surveillance. But you've heard of the term also of watchful waiting. And I want to make something clear here. Watchful waiting and active surveillance is not the same thing. So active surveillance means that somebody, an expert, a urologist or someone is looking over your prostate cancer scenario taking PSAs every three to six months, perhaps other biopsies in the future, and making sure it doesn't get aggressive. And if it does, then there's still an opportunity to treat with the intent to cure. So that's active surveillance. Watchful waiting means you watch and wait. So you don't really monitor the cancer. You sort of wait till and if it gets worse And once it gets worse, perhaps more aggressive and metastasizes, if that happens, then you treat it with aggressive interventions at that point. So active surveillance, meaning no medical treatment, is an option for Leeson 6 prostate cancer. Men care about performance. Now, some men will talk, I want to be healthy. I can't wait to be healthy. The word health and healthy doesn't mean much, particularly to a man. You have to be very specific. What men don't want is to die prematurely. So this diagnosis of a Gleason 6 with the C word in it, it's a low stage, mildly aggressive, if not aggressive at all, stage of prostate cancer. For the first time, you're saying, oh, shoot, I can actually die and I can die sooner than later. So now you're ready to make lifestyle changes. Lifestyle changes that you were not ready before. Because again, men don't do health. Men are trying to avoid dying prematurely. So now this diagnosis, you get to do several things. You get to exercise. And whenever you don't want to exercise because I don't want to do it today, you think of your diagnosis. And you're like, well, that's my medicine today. You're going to eat better. You're going to take 
some nutraceuticals and dietary supplements and you're not going to forget to take them. You're lowering your risk of all-cause mortality. And that is the goal. So the takeaway here is that if you're or your partner or your loved one is diagnosed with a Gleason 6 prostate cancer, I think what you want to do is high five, right? It's just high five with your friends and family because this is the perfect opportunity for you to do better, just do better in life, to reevaluate what's important in your life, to reevaluate what you have control over and what you will control, which is really the only thing you have control over, honestly, is your thoughts, what you put in your mouth, your decision to move your body and be physically active and exercise, and your sleep habits and things like that. Those are major things you have control over that you can change your biochemistry and create really a micro environment in the body that's hostile to cancer cells, which is exactly what you want. But for today, if you're a Gleason 6 prostate cancer, count your blessings. This is an opportunity for you to do better. This is Dr. Gio signing off. Talk to you next time. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Dr. Gio podcast. You can watch all episodes of this podcast and much more by subscribing to my YouTube channel on youtube.com forward slash Gio Espinoza ND. If you love what you heard today, you can help by leaving a five-star review of the podcast on Apple and Spotify, as each review helps us reach more men who are serious about improving their urological health and how to function better with age. And for the latest research and actionable takeaways in the world of men's health and integrative urology, sign up for my newsletter at drgeo.com. I'll see you next time. And now for a brief disclaimer, this podcast is for general information only, and we're not forming a doctor-patient relationship through this medium. The use of the information and all links associated with this podcast is at the listener's risk and is not to replace medical advice from a physician or a healthcare practitioner. Lastly, thoughts and opinions related to this podcast are my own and may not reflect the views of any institution or organization I'm associated with.